Hey you guys, welcome back. My name is Faith and this is my fourth garden tour of the year 2020. Um, a lot has been changing since I last did my last garden tour. So I'm really excited to show you around today. There's a lot of changes and new things growing and blossoming that weren't here before. So let's jump into it. So the first and most exciting thing, if you saw my butterfly, oh, first look at this little bachelor button oh, so cute but I have already been getting ripe tomatoes look even this one starting to change colors that is a I think a golden jubilee so it's starting to change I'm getting a bunch of cherries if I can get it <laughs> one hiding back here you can see I've harvested that whole little section already some other ones starting to change colors this is the most exciting part of the garden for me right now because last year I had such a hard time growing tomatoes so this year I got on the bandwagon put them in really early um, which you can do here in Florida so to be able to have little tomatoes is <laughs> The best thing in the world i'm so excited to have tomatoes this year where i didn't last year so that's been really awesome also i had my first dinner plate dahlia bloom and i have my second one on its way these things i wish i still had the first one but i cut it off and used it in an arrangement for a mother's day for my mom um, and that was a really beautiful way to use it so i feel good about it but i'm ready for this next one start and then we have what I had thought was gonna be my red beef steak but they're just staying really salad at size none of them have gotten bigger than this I probably could have let this keep going and ripening but um, I can let it ripen inside on the counter um, but yes definitely not a beef steak <laughs> size but still really delicious it was really good nothing else is really happening here i am starting some new flowers and things inside so that i can hopefully fill up this space so as you can see my tomatoes have already i need to kind of top them i think because they're already reaching the top of the trellis i may end up letting some suckers go i don't know i mean they still look really healthy and i still have a lot of season left so these ones over here are just mostly producing foliage it's just a little bit too shady i'm getting some flowers though but it's little yellow pears. None of these are ripening yet, but we shall see. But I do want the bottom of this to all be filled with flowers and herbs. So that is my next goal. Just have to show you this beautiful zebra long wing really quick. How pretty. And then we also have on the Tithonia as well, if you missed my last um, video, it was all about flowers and growing for your pollinators and butterflies. So you can find in more information on that in that video. But as you can see, working like a charm. <laughs> so I feel like I'm going a little backwards than I normally do. My cucumber that was trailing the bush cucumber, um, pickle cucumber, is reached the end of its life. So it came out and so did my peas and a lot of other stuff that were in this bed, but I have my okra going. They seem pretty healthy and happy. Um, still loving these sunflowers so, so much. They're so beautiful. I have a bunch of beans along the trellis down here. I have red Chinese noodle beans down here, but they don't seem to be growing um, and taking off. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. I planted them at the same exact time as these purple beans which are doing fantastic. So, I don't know. But anyway, more tomatoes. So this is the Black Beauty tomato, which is black from the presence of anthocyanin. And I think they're gorgeous. I think a lot, I think a lot of tomatoes that I grow are unique and different. Um, and people who aren't really, gardeners are like why are you growing those ugly tomatoes but I think they're beautiful <laughs> so teach their own um, this is 
Dr. Weish. I really have no clue how to pronounce that, but they are getting nice and big. It'll be a beautiful tomato. And then we have a Paul Robeson kind of changing colors down here, which is supposed to be a deliciously flavored um, tomato. And then I, I plant all these little violas in between and they are so cute. I love putting these in, you know, glasses of water with some peppermint. All of my basil starting to get bushy. And you can see where I had topped them off in between for those of you who don't, it's helping to grow up into a bushier plant. So I will probably do the same thing right here. You can see in between the armpit, there's coming some new buds of basil. So I'll just take that. And now this will branch off into two more. So again, here is another one. And you can see I could do it right here or it could go down further and do it here, which is what I think I'm gonna do. And that is how you make your basil grow into a bushier plant. So I'll probably do that to all of my basils. And then up here we have the Costulito Genovese. It's a beautiful red Italian heirloom. One of the ones that some people may think is kind of ugly, but I just love. I love that fluted, fluted tomato. And then this is Brad's Atomic Grape, which is slowly starting to ripen. And these are just the coolest color tomato. They look like galaxies. And then I have a bunch of carrots that I've been slowly getting. Of course, my marigolds. These I, um, I seeded really heavily and had to kind of thin them out. And I thought, well, let me put some of my ones that I'm pulling out over here, but if you don't do a straight hole in the ground, man, they have been growing so funky. Um, like all of them are just extremely weird. You see, and growing like this. So that didn't exactly work well, but they're still edible, so they're just not as pretty. Or as these, you know, or like that one's not as big, but they're coming out relatively normal. <laughs> Over here, my cute little pansies. Some more ground cherries. I'm in love with these things. I actually really like them on salads. They're kind of like a sweet tomato-y flavor, which I really enjoy. I planted my lemon balm, which is really exciting. Now something, when I came out this morning, something has been rooting around in this whole bed and I had to replant all of my flowers because everything had been kind of ripped up and rooted around. I have no clue what that could be or what did that. It's kind of frustrating, um, but everything looks like it survived okay, which is really good. This is my lemon basil, which is the best smelling basil ever. It smells so good. I am in love with it. Pinch that off too. And then we have our blue gold berries, which have been delicious. I just got a few for the first time the other day. Um, and then we have our Napa Chardonnay. Which I have not had any of these yet, but you can tell that these are a yellow tomato. So these are definitely ripening. I'm so excited to try this. I don't think these are gonna make it inside. Those are really good. <laughs> mm. Mm. I love tomato season. And these are my Black Prince tomatoes, which I've already gotten a really big, beautiful one off of here that um, had grown really early. It was delicious. It's a black, um, it wasn't super black, not like the Black Beauty, but it's a dark tomato. And then we have my green zebra, which is a green striped tomato. 
for a lot of these tomatoes that you can't really they're not a traditional red and you can't tell when they're ripe you can just kind of feel them and give them a little squeeze if they have a little give you can tell that they're getting ripe um, some of the blue ones will start kind of turning yellow first and then turn red from there on the bottom even if it's got black on top um, they're all a little different but you can kind of just feel them and get a feel for it that way some more calendula and marigolds i'm obsessed with these marigolds they just look so different with the way these petal shapes and flowers are and how it darkens and then gets lighter so pretty this doesn't have any tomatoes on it yet but it is flowering so that's promising um this is a big rainbow tomato plant and all of these are starting to really get towards the top of the trellis as well. Now everything mirrors the front sides. I need to tie up some of my tomatoes, apparently. Um, but I could spy from the other side that I have a couple more Napa Chardonnays that are ready back here. Yum. And I'm really hoping um, some of these plants come back after they got all pulled out but this one stayed this is a bachelor's button so that's good but uh, a lot of the onions got yanked up um so pretty upset about what all are you that. two getting up to you guys causing trouble back here hmm. she doesn't hang out in the garden videos as much but she's <laughs> oh oh you showing showing off to the camera this girl is my buddy and this guy is Oliver. He just cares about the frisbee. She just cares about rubs. <laughs> so I feel like I'm going around a little bit differently today. Here I have all of my eggplants. I need to put some water in this right now, actually. But these are all hardening off. And this is where some of them will go. So now that all of these vining cucumbers have started to get bigger, I can kind of tell what they are from what I planted. So this I might need is a lemon cucumber. Tastes just like a cucumber, um, but kind of looks like a lemon, but it's a cucumber. It's very good. Um, and then I have another one right beside it. You can see I have several of them growing and then that is a cantaloupe and now a lot of my cucumbers are getting powdery mildew a lot of my squashes are getting powdery mildew so that's proving to be a little bit of a problem i have just been cutting off the leaves i haven't sprayed or done anything you know i try to do mostly organic here um so we'll see how it goes i got all my bachelor buttons blooming aren't those beautiful and I have a tiny little sunflowers down here. Also really beautiful. I love the yellow and the purple together. I think that's really pretty. These are also an herb that you can include in teas, but they're very bitter. Then I have some of my peppers starting to come in, which is very, very exciting. So we have this guy. So this is a violet sparkle pepper. So it'll be a pretty beautiful pepper. Um, that is purple. Then we have, this is a Cubanelle. You can't see any on that one very well. They'll be kind of a big, bigger pepper, kind of bell pepperish, but like much larger um, green. And then we have my Corbachi peppers, which will be long red. They look like they would be spicy, but those are actually a sweet pepper as well. Um, this one never pulled through, so I might plant some flowers there. And then these are habanadas. Just another sweet pepper. I didn't grow too many spicy ones. And then, look guys, I'm actually kind of getting some beets. I'm notoriously awful at growing beets, so that is really, fingers crossed, they keep going. <laughs> and this is a zinnia. I also, this is a, a sugar baby watermelon that is moving at a snail's pace and then that's a melon as well I believe that's a Kajari melon um, also moving at a snail's pace so cucumbers 
melons. <laughs> then if you move over here though, I have some cuca melons. Let me see if I can find one. Look how tiny these little flowers. So if you've never had a cuca melon, they're called Mexican sour gherkins. Um, they're very like this big. They are kind of limey, more sour cucumbers, and they kind of look like little melons. I've also heard them called mouse melons. Um, I'm going based off of what I've heard because I've actually never had some. I grew them last year, they took off, but then I had a bunch of squash vine borers that kind of ate all of my cucurbits, and so I never even got to have one. So they took off, spread, and then I didn't get a single thing. So that was a bummer. Fingers crossed for this year. It's looking promising so far. And here I have some more melons and some loofah. I really need to water when I get off of here. Some more cucumbers. This is some sort of slicing variety. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these even though they're not super big. And this variety does get big. Um, because I want this plant to be able to grow more and not be focusing quite yet on producing cucumbers. Wow, look at this one. Look how spiky cucumbers are, by the way. If you are newer to gardening, cucumbers, pretty spiky. So, that's pretty awesome. So also in this same bed where the cucumbers were that I just got and the cucumelons, I have my squash and this is echinacea. I don't know what variety it is, so I don't know if it's edible or not, but it's coming in really nice and beautifully. Um, more nasturtiums. And then my squash have also been getting powdery mildew. And one of the first places you can check for that is on the back of the leaves. And you can see that little fungus and growth that can slowly kill your plant. So look under the leaves first. It can kind of help you identify um, when your plants are starting to get powdery mildew. Um, it can slowly kill your plant. Um, I This is my first time I've actually ever had powdery mildew, so I'm not really sure how to combat it yet myself. Um, but I have just been, my approach has been to cut off the leaves so they kind of look puny. Um, but I'm trying to save them if I can. But what I'm planning to do, here's some more nasturtiums, aren't these looking so good? Anyway, before I get too sidetracked. So as far as my brassicas go, I just don't have the time or energy right now to try and combat the cabbage moth damage. Um, so, and since I'm already having powdery mildew on these, what I think I'm gonna do is, and what I have already started doing, I have been slowly pulling the brassicas out, not pulling, I cut at the soil line, which is what I always do. And then just giving the greens to my chickens um, and letting them enjoy it so it's not wasted or composting anything that they leave. And I'm gonna plant um, more squash, kind of have a succession going of squash at the end of this bed so that if I need to pull out the ones that are getting taken over by powdery mildew, I can do so and I'll have the other ones going. So that's my plan and I hope it works. I really, man, I want squash. It's like a, such a summer staple. So, what will all be squash and flowers. And then over here, we have my purple potatoes, which you can tell they're getting close to harvesting time because all the foliage is starting to die back. And once it's all fully dead, you can tell that is the time that you can harvest your potatoes. But I've pulled a few out, but you can see, quite big and they really were delicious for the few that I got um, and went ahead and harvested and then some more flowers like usual for me and then we got some peppers going so this is a Hungarian hot wax it's kind of reminds me of like a hot pepperoncini banana pepper look at that And then up here I have, these are actual sweet banana peppers. And then in the back here, I have my, you can, let's see, here we go, jalapenos. So the peppers are looking really good. When they were younger, I topped them off similarly to what I showed earlier with the basil and it helped encourage them to branch out. Um, you can kind of see where I topped them when they were young. Um, 
and now they're all just looking really really healthy and good and then I have more bachelor buttons I love this light lavender the lavender and purple flowers were the last to come into the garden but are so beautiful and now here is where I had my bush beans I'm kind of experimenting. So I have here. never done this, and if you have, I would love to know what your experience was and if it worked for you. But I read that you can actually cut bush beans back. So bush beans are kind of unlike pole beans. Bush beans are kind of like a bumper crop. You get one crop and then you start new seeds when they go bad for a lot of bush versus pole variety of stuff. Um, kind of have like a one life use. But I read that you could cut them back and then that you could get do that several times throughout the course of the summer and or the season and it would continue growing so figured if i'm gonna have to start seeds new anyways i might as well give this a shot first um and it looks to be so, working so far so yes it does <laughs> look a little mutilated right now but you can see i do have some flowers and I figure if it doesn't work within like the next couple of weeks, I can just start some more seeds and bush beans grow so quickly. They're such an easy, fun crop because they grow so fast that um, it really doesn't bother me to try. Look at this, I need to get that. Look at this purple. So I haven't cut this one back yet because it's still um, producing, but bush beans are really, really fun and an easy crop. And I plan to keep this going as long as I possibly can. But if you're growing pole beans, I do want to say that pole beans will continue to keep producing. So they're very different than bush varieties of stuff. So if you don't feel like you want to keep replanting or we'll see if this cutting back works and I'll let you know if you've tried it and it does work for you, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to see what anybody's experience is. I'm always trying to learn and do new things. The great thing about gardening nowadays versus when I was younger growing up learning how to garden is that there are so many more resources now and so many ways to connect with other gardeners and see what their methods are and learn and try new things. So I think that's really beautiful and awesome and so I am never going to say that I am perfect or best. I'm always trying to learn and grow and become better and learn new tips and tricks for where I'm at. So um, that is going to be my goal and my theme forever and following along beautiful beautiful sunflower and then my scarlet runners which are starting to get some beans so scarlet runner beans are really cool because you can grow them harvest them young like this as like a snap bean or you could let them get bigger and dry out and harvest the beans on the inside or use them as dried beans so very multiple ways to use them. Right now, I think I'm just gonna harvest as snap beans and then when it gets closer to the end of their life, I'll let them dry out and save the beans. So snap beans, shelling beans, dried beans, pretty great use. Then over here, I have my purple beans that I mentioned earlier and I kind of already showed you that bed, so I'm gonna keep on moving. So over in the front here, working backwards from how I normally do, I have my rosemary and like I said, I'm growing the cilantro for the coriander. So I never knew this, but cilantro actually refers to the leaves of a cilantro plant where if you grow them and you can harvest the seeds, that's coriander. So I always thought those were two different plants, but they are actually the same plant and I think that's really cool and unique about that. Um, some borage hiding back here my milkweed, which I spotted several friends today. And now watch me not be able to find them. Yep, where did they go? Oh, here we go. Hi. So this is a little monarch caterpillar. Just making its way along. Then I have my zinnias and my favorite plant of all time right now is anise hyssop because i am obsessed with these purple spikes i mean so many bees and little buzzies 
that I don't even know the names of <laughs> are on this. I just love that so much. Then my bee balm looks like it might be getting close to flowering. It's starting to stick up. And then more ground cherries. I, I'm gonna grow even more of these next year because I really like them and they're so, so good. So then up here, I have my squash plants getting really big. I need to come out here and um, provide some support, I think. It feels pretty sturdy, but I'm a little, a little worried about that. So I'd love to provide some support for my butternut squash. Um, like I said before, but in case anybody's new, these are not naturally trailing. I've kind of been just weaving it through. Um, and it works, works like a charm. Works really, really well. On the other side of the trellis, I have more runner beans, more calendula, flowering and trailing rosemary, more anise hyssop, some budding lavender, some more milkweed that's getting started. Um, I love these borage which is also edible, kind of tastes like cucumbers. Um, this is a regular hyssop officinalis, um, which is different than anise hyssop. They're not the same, um, but now that it's flattering, flowering, it looks so beautiful. I love those dark purple. More strawberries, and calendula, bee balm, Nasturtium. You know me, my zinnias and aloe. Still waiting for this fennel to flower. It just will not. And then over here, uh oh, we're missing this guy. More cucumbers. Nice. This is a pickling cucumber. Um, so yeah. Also, before I leave you guys, say hello to my extra broody hen. <laughs> so I'm a new chicken keeper. I've never had a broody hen. She's only a year old. Um, I ordered some hatching eggs because I've actually wanted a blue egg layer for some time um, so hopefully they'll come in in a quick enough time um, if not I really I don't know how to break a broody hen I had tried initially moving her several times and doing a lot of stuff that I've read online but hello um, but it ain't, it ain't working I don't know y'all what I'm supposed to do about a broody hen. So if you also have some advice for that because I know some stuff about gardening, don't know that much about chicken keeping yet, um, but I've been learning, so. <sighs> All right, here's today's little mini harvest. Um, I always collect my calendula flowers to dry and use for face oils. I got several cucumbers, a bunch of basil, maybe I can make some pesto. Um, some carrots and a handful of green beans left, but most of them I've already gotten and are in the freezer, so. So that's it for me today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed getting to see my garden and live vicariously through me. Um, I hope that your garden season will be just as beautiful and productive as mine has been so far. Um, I'm actually on my lunch break right now, working from home, so I gotta go get back to work, but. I will see you guys next time.